end, I always said, if I end up being a full-time commentator, I've failed at life. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Scott Storris. Can I jump straight in by just saying, what are the current roles you're doing? We see you crop up in different places in the media, but what's what's in the in the, the package of, of things you're doing nowadays? Uh, look, I do um, two lots of television work, one being for Sky New Zealand in New Zealand during our home summer when uh, opposition or overseas countries come to New Zealand, and, and that's a pay TV network. Um, that's on ground doing the whole raft of some presenting stuff through to... Uh, you know, commentating uh, the action out in the middle. On top of that, I work in India too, which is studio-based more than on ground, but we do a whole raft of different things too where we have our own studio where we're getting up doing demonstrations, commentating off the screen rather than being at the ground uh, yeah. and therefore have more responsibilities because we've got to do a, a lot more magazine-style shows. So, you know, it's, a, it's quite interesting that the two different dynamics of being on ground or in the studio as well. Yeah. Mate, and that's uh, the transition into the media. Uh, a fair few players have done it, but not always a, not always an easy one. What's it been like for you stepping from, from one side of the microphone to the other? Um, well, it's been a, a long time in coming. That's the thing. I first walked into the commentary box in 2005 when I was injured and I was still playing. Uh, so at that point, it was just simply for a game or two games where you're able to offer insights into the dressing room and uh, the way the team strategies are going to... Uh, are playing out and why things are happening. And then as uh, there are three versions of cricket, of course, and as I reduced those down to two and then to one, uh, that provided more time to to get into the commentary box as well. So over the course of the next following, oh, I don't know, maybe six or seven, six years or so, uh, that slowly increased into the commentary box and then it became full-time uh, post, say, uh, 2011, when all I was doing was playing the domestic 2020 around the world. Uh, and then I, that left me free at home for all bar about three weeks of the season. So uh, it was a gradual process. And, and like all players, at some stage it, it clicks and you must start thinking about life post-cricket. Yeah. But was it always the intention or was it something that you, you stumbled <laughs> in and, into in some ways? Well, I use the same line when people ask me this. And the line is towards the right at the back end, I always said, if I end up being a full-time commentator, I've failed at life. And uh, and that is simply because I think, like most people, they want to get away from the game. They want to do something else. Um, but, uh, you know, I've had it described to me as well that it's like we, what I have is like an MBA in cricket. So why then go off and start at the bottom of the heap somewhere else and instead of maybe starting with an MBA and you're near the top and you can carry on working in the industry that I know. So... Uh, it's probably the right way of looking at things, and 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 that's the way I'm doing it anyway. It, there's, yeah. it could always end tomorrow. There's more and more uh, big names retiring every year, uh, but you know I've, I'm enjoying what I'm doing and and the diverse role. It's not just simply uh, enlightening people. It's about uh, I guess dictating what goes on uh, conversation wise on the screen. In terms of the challenges, um, being on the other side, commentating on people that you that yep. you know well, uh, what's how how do you juggle that? Well, look, there's always a, a positive way to commentate. I mean, you try really hard not to be negative. And you're right, I've played with or against most of the players. It's changing every single year. There's Every year there's a new player who I either didn't play with or against or a new player I haven't even heard of. So uh, my professionalism, I guess, has to go up because I need to uh, do more research on these players and what and who they are and what uh, skills they have. Whereas before I could simply turn up because I knew both their games and the opposition inside out um, in terms of I won't say criticizing but if things are not always great from people I know um, you try and be still positive because nobody wants to sit down and listen to a seven hour cricket day and what you're hearing then is constant negative criticism of people so you can either praise the opposition or praise the praise your own teammate there are there's always a way of sort of working it. So, uh, you know, I've had a couple of people recently tell me they felt I was too negative. So you try and uh, you try and adjust on the fly in some ways. Yeah. Mate, yourself and a, and a couple of other uh, former Black Caps took an interest in what we were doing with Blinder. Just curious about your your initial, what, what first piqued your interest in what we were doing? Uh, 
the, the idea. Any sports person who I've talked to about it, not just the other two cricketers who are involved, uh, loved it straight away. The, the fact that my wife also is a TV presenter and therefore knows the fact that there's a big database of um, athletes' numbers and if ever anything happens in, in their particular field, then they can just simply scroll through the database, find the number of whoever they want to speak to, and then that person gets bombarded. Uh, on top of that, at, the, at that same time, one of my former teammates, Brendan McCullum, uh, was going through a high-profile court case in London, and he was being bombarded by media around the world to his private number, and it meant he had to change his phone number. So we all knew anyone who was involved with sport knew straight away that they uh, any possible way of protecting and having a bit of privacy – uh, it was a good thing. So uh, it, it didn't take long at all just to say, oh, this this is a product that is fantastic. And uh, and the fact that it's then morphed its way into video and, and actually been able to help the media uh, was something initially that I didn't expect or um, think was going to be part of it. But uh, it's been a, a real pleasant transition and uh, surprise. And when you speak to media, now that I'm on the other side of the fence, uh, they love the concept. Yeah, nice. Scott, I was stunned myself when, as you know, I, I worked in, in uh, communications yeah. with the New Zealand Rugby League team, wasn't giving out the numbers of the players and was stunned to find that that was um, pretty prevalent behaviour uh, in all sorts of sports, but in particular within cricket, which uh, you're better placed than me to, to judge, but I'd say one of the most corruptible of the sports, the sports that need to be seen to be doing the most to protect. Is that another factor that sort of rang bells for you? Yep. I think it's, um, I think for that very reason, you know, um, there's a couple of reasons why I think it's great in cricket. One of those is uh, touring the subcontinent. Not a lot of media actually want to do that. It's still a third world country. There's a lot of comforts of home these days, but it's still a third world country. So uh, a lot of them do their media work remotely, which means communications with the players. And you're right, the media manager then has uh, a lot of uh, time consuming low productivity work to be done. Um, from our perspective, when I was playing and the other players at the time, you're right, the uh, the match fixing side of things is big because it's not regulated in this part of the world. You often see players carrying two or three phones and we all have to put those phones into a bag once we arrive at the ground. We don't get those back till the end. Uh, but any particular way where you don't have to do that, you don't have to carry three phones because you've got a personal phone or a business phone. And, and the reason is you keep a personal phone because nobody then knows your details and you can just get on with life. It, will ma it makes things incredibly simple for, mm -hmm. for the athlete. Mate, I watch a lot of sport and I watch a lot more sport when I know who is playing. And I see that as one of the real big challenges for any sport, you know, that, that if you know who the participants yeah. are, you are far more interested. Um, what does cricket need to do to – does cricket need to keep blazing away with, with three different formats of the sport and try and let people understand who the, the, the various stars are in the different formats? Or what's, what's your suggestion uh, on the way forward? <laughs> this is going to be a short call, so I mean, with that, that sort of a question could go forever. Uh, yeah, look, there will be three uh, formats of the game. One, I'm sure the T20 version will continue to grow uh, and take a lot of people's uh, attentions, but it does appeal to everybody. There are some the Test match, it's all about that. England, for example, the Test game is huge, and it's still the number one format. Other places like India, it's all about T20. So you know, the, the way that uh, you're able to promote these stars uh, in the different formats, it all helps. I mean, I think the American sports like basketball are going through the roof because what they do is promote the heroes and make these guys uh, superstars and therefore kids then want to be who these kids, these guys are. And uh, that's where a lot of other sports have, have room to, to catch up and they need to catch up. But that comes from positive media, which they're always getting out there and, and making characters and personalities of these superstars. And crickets, it's not something they've really done. A quick question to finish. Um, yep. If you could speak to anyone in the world, Scotty, uh, through in any different walk Ooh. of life, who would you most love to uh, have a one-on-one -on -one chat with? Oh, what a question that is. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've changed, actually. I, I mean, I'm no longer into the, uh, the sporting world as such. I still have people like Tiger Woods because I'm a bit of a golf fan still love my football, I still love my American sports, funnily enough, in the NBA and the Major League Baseball. 
Um, but I'd probably look to, to speak to a guy um, named Scott Boris, of all things. He's a, an agent in American sport. He's sort of the kingpin over there and just learn how uh, on the other side of the, of, of the field, how things are done in terms of looking after their athletes and what they do. Um, so I know that's not really the answer you wanted uh, in the sense that it's not a big name, the athlete perhaps, um, but, you know, I think American sports lead the way in terms of professionalism and driving the game forward. So uh, I'd love to learn more about that side of it. Lovely. Hey, thanks so much for squeezing us into your day, Scotty. No worries. Anytime. Okay. Get out there. Cheers. Mate. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Cheers.